Hi everyone, my name is Joseph. I've been thinking about the recent games I picked up, not just for the month of uh, September, but it's been September, August, and even one late July release as well. So <laughs> forgive me about that. But most of my purchases has been from the month of September. Uh, the first one I want to start though, since uh, this is the earliest purchase, I should have shared this earlier as well, but I'm planning to do its own video. Uh, but the limited edition of Legend of Heroes Trails into Rivery. This is a really awesome collection. It actually came with um, a hardcover mini book. I don't want to take it out right now just because I, I don't want to rush and I want to keep it uh, as neat as I can. But definitely in a future video, I will go ahead and show uh, what I mean by that little hardcover book. Uh, if, if anyone's ever played the Legend of Heroes, specifically Trails of Code Steel, uh, there's a series of uh, in-game books that one could read and the uh, Falcom actually converted that into a real life hardcover uh, mini a mini hardcover uh, book of that so that's really cool <laughs> I really do appreciate that and of course the soundtrack if anyone's ever played Legend of Heroes they are more than likely are familiar with the amazing soundtrack that every arc always seems to have if anyone's interested in the limited edition um, recently just last week or two weeks ago the new entry the Calvard arc uh, Legend of Heroes uh, Trails into Boundless um, Boundless into Trails something that excuse me just got announced the English translation for that name one could pre-order that limited edition and also in addition to that Charles of Code Steel 3 and 4 uh, a limited edition for the PS5 also got recently announced. This is the only series that I get limited editions for. Uh, usually I wait for games to go on sale just because I love how compact it is. Usually limited edition items are quite bulky, quite big, but I love how compact and small they are. They come with great items, the game itself, a still book, the soundtrack, and usually little bonuses such as an acrylic stand or in the case of this, that awesome book. Um, what is the book called? Um, oh, fortunately, I can't recall it. Uh, the, the number nine or the song of nine, something along that lines. I might be wrong about that. Excuse me. But yes, that's my first purchase. Again, this is the earliest purchase sometime in July. You know what? In fact, since I have my computer right here, let me just look up the release date. July 7th. So... <laughs> I really should have shown this off a little bit. Not sh shown it off, excuse me, that sounds um, pretentious. I really should have um, displayed it, showed and towed it uh, quite sooner. Uh, anywho, continuing forward, uh, there's really no order or format that I'm doing this in. I'm just creating some space. I have my water uh, tin or container on the side. Let me move that aside. Uh, so we'll begin at the top uh, with, I guess, my Vita game. Surprisingly, I actually got a Vita game, Metal Gear Solid, the HD collection. Unfortunately, well, this is one that I did use to own in the past, but then like a fool, I sold it. But I made the choice to go ahead and repurchase it because the game did get delisted. But I've been in the mood of just really utilizing my Vita. And since I did start playing it a long time ago, I never did finish the game. I started with Metal Gear Solid 3. I do have trophies for it, but again, quite early, I dropped the game, so I never finished getting the rest of the trophies. So I used that as an excuse to go ahead and finish it since uh, the PS3 version, the trophy list is separate from the Vita version. So I went ahead and did that. I'll be having some more Vita games coming in, uh, so I have that to look forward to. My cats are here, so I need to be careful. She's a little tyrant. Fire Emblem Engage. This game was on sale, probably, if not the favorite series that I have on the Nintendo uh, franchise. Fire Emblem is quite literally the only reason why I bought a Switch to begin with. Fire Emblem is my favorite Nintendo franchise uh, series. And uh, I am quite upset that unfortunately the Fire Emblem Game Boy Advance game cannot be bought separately but needs to be bought with the uh, Nintendo subscription. Uh, really looking forward to playing this one. Unfortunately, I haven't beaten three houses yet, but I'm in the middle of doing that. I'm the, I'm the type of gamer who unfortunately has the bad habit of beginning games and then starting other games before finishing the current one, unfortunately. I really dislike doing that. Oh no, my cat! I don't want her... <laughs> Excuse me, I do love my cat, but... <laughs> um, items and stuff, right? Excuse me. I also bought uh, Dragon Quest, the collection for the Switch. Uh, I do have the Dragon Quest modern games, also the versions for my 3DS slash 2DS. I really want to start getting into the series as a whole. And I do know, I'm aware, kind of like The Legend of Heroes, they kind of come in bit of arcs. Uh, what I mean is that this three is a trilogy, and the next three is its own little trilogy, and then we have the next set of games as well. Moving on from, uh, so we started with uh, limited edition handheld, a handheld hybrid. 
hybrid. Now moving on to just completely console, we have uh, Languizier 1 and 2. I got this because I've always heard good things about uh, this game in general. If one enjoys um, what's the, the, the same genre that Fire Emblem is. I'm having a lapse of judgment right now. Tactical RPGs, GRPGs. Uh, SRPGs, there you go, strategy SRPGs. If one SRPGs, if one enjoys that genre, they're going, they might enjoy this uh, game as well. I went ahead and decided to get it because rarely is it on sale. It's always selling for about $45 to $50. And sometimes shipping is included. Some sometimes it's not. So I made the choice to get it now uh, before it gets more expensive in the future. In addition to that, I got Everspace Stellar Edition. I'm not going to lie, this was heavily influenced because of Starfield. I've been really enjoying myself with Starfield, uh, but I don't really have a lot of sci-fi opera, sci-fi uh, games besides for Mass Effect, which I beat, of course, the original trilogy. I beat the original on 360, PS3, and then the Legendary Edition. I beat Andromeda once, but I'm hoping, uh, I recently subscribed for Game Pass. I'm using that as an excuse to replay Andromeda on my Xbox. <laughs> Um, big Mass Effect fan, but I could only take so much Mass Effect, right? Sometimes I do want another sci-fi game uh, besides for Rogue Galaxy or Star Ocean, hence why I got Everspace, because this allows me to pilot a ship. Um, really looking forward. I did start um, uh, looking into Everspace and Everspace 2, because I am aware that Everspace 2 has already been out. I did play a little bit about a little bit of that through Game Pass before this was on sale. Everspace, the first one. I also got Dead Island Definitive Edition. I do own this uh, digitally, uh, but I'm a fan of representing my games physically when I can. So that's why I decided to go ahead and get this. It was really cheap too, as well. So that's why I decided to go ahead and do it. Uh, this is one of those games that I see rise in price, not too high, usually between fifteen to twenty-five dollars, and I'd rather pay less for it than more. This is a game that I regret not getting earlier. I remember seeing this for quite cheap, about 20 to 25, but I don't really see it going down in price usually. Baldur's Gate. Um, so I decided to go ahead and get it. Not as cheap as I usually like to get them, unfortunately, but one of those situations where I think it might be more expensive in the future than cheaper. So that's why I decided to get Baldur's Gate. I am looking forward to, I don't really have much experience with CRPGs, but I am looking forward to checking this out just because uh, I am a fan of world building and RPGs in general, and I am aware about how a influence Dungeons and Dragons has. And I'm not gonna lie, I also recently saw the movie Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves, or Honor Among Thieves, whichever the title or subtitle may be. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and so it got me really excited to go into the world of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so yeah, so that's hence why I got Baldur's Gate. I am also aware about Baldur's Gate Three, which everyone just seems to be loving and enjoying. And um, I really want to check that out. Excuse me, everyone. I'm going kind of quickly. Pardon me about that. Going back to Dead Island. From what I've, you know, I have played of it so far, it is a fun game, especially if you have friends to play it with, friends or family, or a significant other, or just people to play it with. Um, but even when one is playing alone, uh, it could be fun, I suppose. I haven't really played it alone quite yet, but I am more than likely going to be doing so because, um, unfortunately, my co-op playthroughs, uh, um, it's always on and off, on and off. I want to be able to do a full playthrough and discuss it via a review. But I do enjoy it. I do have Dead Island 2, uh, which will be for a future video. But um, I would definitely recommend to get that on sale, <laughs> not for full price. But again, that's for a different video. Moving on, I got Psychonauts 2, the Mother Lobe Edition. The Mother Lobe Edition includes, as indicated in the back, um, a lenticular sleeve, which is this. A reversible cover, six premium, premium die cut stickers, six art cards, a digital download of exclusive behind the scenes development work. I went ahead and got this just because uh, if, if, if I'm able to get a different edition besides the base game for a cheaper price, then why not? Um, and it was fairly cheap and I keep hearing how there was limited uh, copies, quality, quantities made. So again, another case of rather get it now where it's fairly cheap than in the future where it might become more expensive moving on so i thought so we'll save this one for last uh moving on because sticking with the playstation uh, and i'll have south park the fractured butthole <laughs> so really quickly apparently i've always thought it should have been just called fractured butthole and i think that would have been a fun tongue-in-cheek title i never liked the inclusion of the dub but i just recently found out that the trey and stone parker Whatever the creators of South Park, they wanted to call this the Fractured Butthole. Like, the Fractured Butthole as the title. 
but because of the ER, ESRB, they weren't allowed to do that. So they did a play on words and said, pardon me, I know this is blocking it. Uh, I'm not playing it right now, but once I do start playing it, I'll open it. But yeah, until then, I just like to keep things in the screen grab until I actually start playing it because I do have cats, dust, and fur, everything like that, right? But once that's taken off, when we'll be able to see the the fractured butthole. You can kind of see it right here, the fractured, and then the separate butt, and then the separate word hole. So the, that's why it's the fractured butthole because in order to kind of throw it at the man, uh, well, we can't say the fractured butthole. Screw you, we'll say the fractured butthole. So now that I understand why they included the dub, that makes sense to me. But before I knew that, I did wish that the, 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 that the dub was removed. But it makes a lot of sense now. Uh, I'm more of a Simpsons fan, but the reason why I decided to get this is because I'm usually more of an individual who's, who, in, in, an individual who's into serialized shows than episodic shows. Um, so because of that, I have seen some South Park, the earlier seasons, but I really uh, saw the serialized portion. So season 18, 9, oh wait, whenever that season became serialized, the this, this show, uh, that's really when I started watching it. But then I stopped, uh, but then I decided to give it another go since I have HBO. <laughs> and it did make me laugh and made me chuckle. I'm not going to lie, the whole recent season and integrity, 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 uh, excuse me, I can't pronounce it correctly, integrity farms, that did become a little bit um, ham fisted, it became a little bit tiring, tired, uh, but it was fun well, uh, when it was first introduced and everything before that as well was fun as well. So that's the recent seasons, but maybe want to get the game as well because I was enjoying it. I also heard how the first game is connected to this game and supposedly rumor has it there's going to be another South Park game. So just in case there is, I'd rather have uh, played the first two. In addition to that, I have Digimon next order so i'm not going to lie i've never been really into the digimon v pets it's only recently that i checked them out and they're fun they're, they're i do enjoy them but i do prefer the vital bracelet a lot more compared to the v pets but i've heard about how digimon world actually has a slight story and if one enjoys the v pets they might enjoy the game as well it was really cheap and i do i am a huge digimon fan i love digimon so i decided you know what why not let me i'm enjoying the v pets who knows i might enjoy or even uh, really love the video game version of the V Pet. So Digimon Next Order. I actually think it's kind of cool that the protagonists, they kind of have a vital bracelet, a proto vital bracelet. What they wear on the wrist is a, uh, a, a a strap with the V Pet on top. So it doesn't look like this. It looks like the actual brick, the brick V Pet, and they wear that around the wrist. Oh, you could kind of see it right here. You probably won't, probably won't be able to see it, but uh, that's the best that I could do. That's supposed to be the brick V pet. And then I also have, oh no, good thing it was in a plastic. See, this is what I mean. Why I like to put it, leave it in the shrink wrap and tool until I am ready to play it. Uh, it was just slightly damp from water. Uh, but thankfully it was in the shrink wrap. So that's a okay. I haven't beat the first one yet. Again, hence why it's in the shrink wrap. But once I do beat it, that was, yeah, I'm going to open it. Just making sure there's no more watermarks. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course I'm going to open it. I do own the Vita version. I decided to get the PS4 version just because, again, I'm a big Digimon fan. It was cheap, less than 20 bucks, and I wanted to have it part of my collection that I have the console version. So the game that I skipped, so one more cause, I did a video quite... Let me go ahead and move these games over here because obviously we had it before. There was a little bit of water. Let me make sure right here is fine. Okay. Put this over here. And my Vita game as well. Oh no, and then good thing I didn't put oh, okay, everything. Yeah, which is that side um, from my water. So we're going to go besides to that. But the last game that I skipped, oh no, I accidentally, <laughs> I accidentally put it over here by accident, um, was a PS3 game. So, one more cause, I did a video where I explained that I think I thought I was done purchasing uh, PS3 games, but obviously. I was incorrect about that. In that video, I did state that uh, there might be another that I purchased, um, but but I felt like I was done. I did decide to get the PS3 version of South Park, The Stick of Truth. Um, excuse me, that was a hiccup. Uh, yeah, I, I'm aware there's a PS4 version, um, but again, even if I can't, I'd rather prefer to get the, I, I prefer to get the original version. I do, I am aware that there's a PS4 physical copy, I believe there is, for sure there's a digital version. But it first came out on the PS3, hence why I wanted the PS3 copy. And in fact, I actually do have another PS3 game incoming. It's just not uh, here yet. Uh, but for sure, we'll be showing that in a, uh, showing and telling that via a video in the future. But these are the recent game pickups that I did recently. Um, 
uh, I was shocked that I got so many, but I decided to get these games because again, for the most part, they were on sale. They were either beneath 20 bucks or uh, as cheap as they typically can be uh, considering the, uh, what kind of game that they are. I usually try to get my games only when they're on sale, but I am noticing when it comes to PS5 and Xbox Series X games, um, getting things for 20 or low or getting things for 20 or beneath that's becoming a little bit more of a challenge. It's looking like 25 might be the new 20. Uh, but I'm going I'm going to go ahead and pay attention this holiday season to see if that little uh, uh, observation holds true or not. Thank you so much for I guess since we had a little bit of Digimon action, I'll go ahead and put this up here. I only like to include that when I discuss Digimon. We have two Digimon games. So two. Yeah, two, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Again, I'm not really used to the V-Pet side, so that's why even I'm too shocked and getting used to that uh, for myself. <laughs> so like, two, I know about Digimon's story, but what's the other one? No, that's right, next order. <laughs> Anywho, um, and one thing I do hope everyone leaves away from this video is to go ahead and check out The Legend of Heroes. That's the back side. Highly cannot recommend this series enough. Uh, and what's so awesome is that back then, the West had to wait for so long for the next iteration. But now they're coming a little bit more quickly as compared to the past. I'd rather have it come three, uh, around three years rather than five to seven years. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Have a great day and take care, everyone.